Hey y'all, this is Amuck, Madam Hexa, and Caitlin Case, and this is Trouble Comes in Three. This podcast talks about scandalous topics such as communication, relationships, BDSM, leather, and more. If you are under the age of 18, please leave us and visit scarletteen.com. If you're over 18, join us I forgot the rest of my sentence. And that's good naughty. Hey, good naughty. <laughs> it's dramatic pause. I thought you were gonna like whip out a, 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 a catchphrase. Right, yeah. I was like, I just it was brewing, I saw it, I was like, no, it's I forgot the like beginning of the catchphrase. That's kind of, I, I like, usually forget the end of our conversations and I'm like, line. <laughs> <laughs> the magic of editing. <laughs> Where's your flowery then? It's a house road. Well, the bank cove up that way, Pauline. Pauline Mark? That's the one. Can't swing a cat, but at a cove. Who is Pauline? She's had an anti-bully fate. Died her eye or her ends her right mess. Anti-bony. I hope she vaguely straight to the crimper. Well, that's where she'd just been. Pallone tried to give her an Irish multi palaver. Pauline told her to shove a shikel up a kyber. She didn't say that. Wait, wee ducky wee, and you're actual English. Yeah, she's all wind and piss, Pauline. She's still with Phyllis, then? And she heard. She's been a real boner over. Blowing the ground salts, ling grappling dilly boys, trolling the back slums. She had to be battered twice last month. She did. All in just stretcher case. Trolled in one notch, she devoured a Phyllis plate and some shin bars she blagged in the brandy lap. Fish the dirt. It's all over grumble for Pauline. Nancy Denali up to her elbow in the national handbag. She'd only just gone in for a remold. Had to refake her entire basket. Speaking of baskets. Oh, Gloria. That stretchy corribungus. Fortune. So, hmm? did any of you understand what that was talking about? No. I'm going to just say no. <laughs> <laughs> so I can make assumptions based on some yeah. of the phrases. Yeah, but I, thought I, I thought I had an idea and then I was like, mm, maybe not. So, that little snippet was actually from a short film called Putting on the Dish. And the entire, all of the words spoken are in a language of Polari. So, today, we're going to talk about secret languages or hidden communication methods. Um, Why was this important? Throughout the 20th century, being gay, lesbian, trans, anything that was not, like, the ideal picture of society Mm -hmm. was dangerous. They could persecute us. They could kill us. You know, chance of losing your job or losing your family. Yeah. So people had to find ways to communicate. But that's something that's been going on for millennia. Forever. <laughs> um, and in the early to mid 20th century, Polari came into being. Now, it came from a couple of different places. It's a mosh posh. Yeah. Um, the actual word polari is from the Italian word parlay. Oh, like to, to converse, to, yeah. to have the conversation? Like, yeah. Know. And so, parlay. Parli. 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 This was yeah. just like bad Essex pronunciation of parlay. <laughs> <or something. laughs> it's like, how did <laughs> um, I mean, listen to that clip, I was like, wow. Yeah, I was like, oh. Yeah. So, polari was a language spoken around the 1800s. Uh, mostly this, like, traveling circuses, sailors, buskers, things like that. Uh, that way they could talk and people didn't know what the f- they were talking about. Okay. Um, was it originally more Italian, though? Because this is, this is plain English, what they were speaking. They were not, actually. But it's not. So it's a mix of Italian, uh... French Yiddish, American Air Force, Cockney rhyming. Cockney, that's yeah. thing. Like, yeah. yeah. And uh, backslang, which are words that are like flipped around. Mm-hmm. Hmm. Um, I'll give some examples of it. Uh, so, eek is face. Gonna have an eek with a bubble and squeak. Yeah. Bubble and squeak is actually a dish, it's a food. Oh. Okay. <laughs> I don't know. I was like, what? In her context? I don't know. I but like, in, huh? in Cockney, it's a bubble and squeak is a dish. Like it's okay. a potato cake and okay. like leeks or something like that. Huh. Yeah. So eek 
in Polari is face, it's shorthand for face spelt backwards. Okay. So it's E-E-K is how they swap it over. Um, There are a lot of words that sound very close to other language. So in Italian, the word for two is dui Mm -hmm. or due. And then in Polari, it's dui. Like, okay. So okay. Just different, different so emphasis a little bit. Shifted things around. Okay. Um, and if you actually see it, if somebody writes it down for you, like, you'll see it sounds very English when you're listening to it, and it is, but then there's all of this other jumbled stuff in yeah. between. Mm-hmm. Um, and all of it was a way to talk about things that you wouldn't want other people knowing you were talking about. So it started in the Mediterranean, but then it kind of merged with all of these other things. Uh, it was predominantly used by theater people, Mm -hmm. uh, circus performers, sailors, or what they called sea queens. So all the traveling (laughs) tramps is what I'm hearing. Yes. (laughs) Sex workers. All the traveling tramps. I gotcha. Uh, Prostitutes the whole whole nine yards. Fair enough. Um, Those were the people that were already using it, and then it started coming up into specifically male gay culture. Gotcha. In London. Okay. Um, and across the UK. Gotcha. Uh, lesbians did use it upon occasion as well, but it was predominantly gay male. And I feel like use. maybe that might be because, like, lesbians didn't exist, right? Right. Like, they were, it wasn't as <laughs> criminalized for woman-on-woman sexual relations as it was for men. That's what I mean didn't exist. What I mean is that nobody, you couldn't be prosecuted for it because they didn't believe you existed. Exactly. So it was more, I think, important that men could communicate because they're the ones that are going to get strung up over it. And it was still that idea of, like... Women don't do that thing. We're not like, sexual at all, so, so certainly like, not very sexual with each other. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, the vast majority of people who spoke the language only knew a little bit of the language. We well, only needed a little bit, didn't you? Though, yeah, enough to like describe somebody or something, right? But other people, like the two depicted in this movie, could actually have whole conversations that sound like weird gibberish, but are actually like completely coherent to the mm-hmm. people who know how to say it. Um, it was a oral tradition Mm -hmm. so it's not written down anywhere originally um and it's not really researched right there aren't a ton of people doing research in it i wonder if and it might be is it still needed in some places of the world and decoding it might be dangerous for some people honestly probably um so we'll kind of jump ahead. Oh, come oh back. Okay. Sorry, 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 sorry. No, no, we'll, we're we'll, just eager. We'll go through like history stuff, okay, and then okay. we'll get into like the okay. fun words okay, and gotcha, shit gotcha, like gotcha. that. So, in the um, 1950s, or sorry, late 1960s, uh, there was a British broadcasting uh, corporation, BBC, BBC, yeah. BBC. Uh, BBC had a radio show called Round the Horn. Okay, horn with an E. Um, And this had two characters who incorporated Polari into their, like, show. It was a a variety show. Okay, I gotcha. Um, And so it was madly popular. It was significantly tamer than most Polari, which tended to be very, like, Graphic? Snarky and kind of graphic and like... Well, but that's what you were using it for, though. Right, right. exactly. You using it to talk about the weather because you wouldn't have to. But Round the Horn was a family show. Ah. So they kind of toned it down a little bit, even though sometimes uh, the actors did throw in, like, more saucy Right, but what's wording. the harm? No one will know. Right. <laughs> right. <laughs> well, <laughs> while they didn't... In the show, they didn't actually explain it. Certain things kept coming up. Like the trend happened. Mm-hmm. The trend. People started connecting dots and things like that. That was part of the show. Um, unfortunately, taking something that really protected you and suddenly making it so that everyone it had true? it meant that it was no longer as safe to use as a protective language. Um, the other thing that was going on around this time, the 60s, and then extensively in the 70s was a very big shift in the way that the gay community or a large percentage wanted to show themselves. Okay. Um, We see it a lot when we look at American history uh, that, you know, 60s, 70s, they want a more macho appearance. They don't want to be like the gays before them. Right. The frilly gays. The frilly gays. They want to be like macho gays. Right. So in the 70s, the uh, gay rodeos begin in America 
there are these more masculine examples of gay men okay. popping up in somewhat more um, accepting cultures. Right. And so the UK gay scene starts to pick up more American influence. Okay. Mm-hmm. And they decide that Polari is antiquated. It's frilly. It's frilly. It makes us stand out. Okay. Even though now we want to, like, just be. Right. Okay. So okay. it fell out of use out for of the fashion, most part. as it were. Yeah. Um, you'd still hear it in, like, theater groups and things like that. Um, again, the tramps. Right. The tramps, tramps. kept it around. Um, there were some really amazing drag queens who did shows where they would throw in some Polari here and there. And early in the scene, they would throw it out, and then they would explain it to the audience. But, as but well. the people who actually spoke Polari in the audience knew that that was not the correct translation. Uh, they're, like, mistranslating, and then, gotcha. you know, you get extra jokes because <laughs> all these people are <laughs> not going as, around. <laughs> yeah. Gotcha. Or totally a thing. Um, and then you also... So they wanted to get away from this camp image of, like, male prostitution and frilliness and, like... Yeah. Otherness. Um, in the... This continues through the 60s and 70s, and he's pretty much no one is speaking it anymore. Gotcha. However, it does keep cropping up. Cropping up? Yeah. 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 Cropping up uh, at different times in media. Okay. So David Bowie has his album... Uh, Bowie, boy, where you going? Come in. It's right there. Yeah. Um, Black Star. <laughs> Black Star, yeah. It's like Black Sky? Black... Yes. So... Um, in more recent popular culture, it has gotten a bit more uh, common. Okay. It's starting to peak up more because the it's coming back into fashion. Yeah, and people are Is wanting to grab it. Now? <laughs> honestly, probably, I, and I'm not even mad about that. Honestly, like whatever keeps this kind of, right. especially like oral traditions, traditions, like whatever yeah. keeps that kind of shit alive. Like even if it's like trendy. It's still, it's cool to have. And this yeah. is, uh, in linguistic circles, this is considered a dying language. Oh, it is 100%. like critical Especially because no one wrote it down. Right. Exactly. So, um, David Bowie's Black Star, Girl Loves Me, mm-hmm. actually contains a number of Polari lyrics in it. Pulling out that record later, I'll be like, oh. Right. <laughs> right. It's a whole new, like, yeah. oh. Well, I just thought you were just being gross. Um, <laughs> there's Putting on the Dish, which we heard a little snippet. Mm-hmm. It's only like a six minute thing but it the whole thing is in Polari which is really interesting mm-hmm. as you start to pick up the cues uh the movie Love is the Devil there is a song from Morrissey called Piccadilly Parlay Parlay Piccadilly Parlay um and I'll explain Fucking Piccadilly Morsi. in a second Fucking Morsi. <laughs> and then uh, I loved the title of this book by Mark Michael Carson. It's called Sucking Sherbert Lemons. Huh. Fair enough. Okay. And I'm like, I love that. That's Sounds just naughty crazy. already. Let's okay. go. <laughs> um, in the 1990s, the Britons, British uh, Sisters of Perpetual Indulgence, mm-hmm. actually started incorporating Polari into their sermons and their blessings. And they've okay. created oh. a Polari de- uh Bible that you can actually access online oh, now. Okay, That's good so to know. Right? You got some spare time in your life, guys. <laughs> if you wouldn't want to learn that second language, guys. Right. <laughs> right. <laughs> right. Whip that one out of the next family dinner. Um, so there, unfortunately, there's not a lot of research being done on this. However, um, I'll have a bunch of links for at the end. Yeah. Uh, Do your own research. Maybe you'll be the next linguist, whoever's listening. Yes. Um. I got a lot of my information from someone named Paul Baker. Okay. Uh, and they have a couple of books as well as some amazing online resources. He's actually a academic linguist and he goes in depth. It's like one of the syntax and trying to like really yeah. dissect the, it a little bit. And the culture okay. of it, like the culture okay. that surrounded the development of the okay. language and things like that. Yeah. Um, and then for people that just kind of want a jumpstart into it, which is actually, I will admit, how I found out <laughs> that Polari was a thing, uh, is a YouTuber, Instagram amazingness, and quite wonderfully gay, well, quite wonderfully lesbian and gay mm-hmm. woman, mother to be. Oh, interesting. Uh, Jessica Kelgren Fozard. Okay. So, okay. highly recommend them. 
nasty. My bad. She's like, don't, 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 don't look at the man behind the curtain. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> so, talking about the words. Talking about the words. Let's do the words. Now that we got like the history stuff. <laughs> it's a lot of history. Sorry, y'all. That's all right. Not no, sorry. Like I'm sorry. Go for it. All right. So, one of the most common ones was Bona Tavada Your Dolly Old Eek. Something about your face. We learned face earlier. We learned face. <laughs> Uh, it was a way to say, like, good to see your pretty face. Yeah, it was like, Dolly is like, cute. Yeah. yeah, it was a cute face. So. Bueno, like, like, like when you right. say, when you're saying no. Well, yeah, no. like, good, like, bueno, okay. like, and like, buona sera. Okay. Buona sera in Italian, like, hello. Oh. So this is a really good example of that mix of different slangs and culture mm-hmm. that gets to put together. Because, like you said, bona, Italian, for good. Mm-hmm. Vada is Romani, for seeing. Mm-hmm. Uh. Dolly is pretty. It comes from both Cockney rhyming and Victorian yeah. English. Okay. Yeah. And then eek is back slang. It's short for face. So, I like, know. you see, like, it's one sentence. It kind of sort of sounds like it's all the same dialect, but it's not. And, like, it's all over the place. <laughs> um, some other words. So, homosexual during this time, just like it was here, it's a bad word like dirty in the not great sense you know mm-hmm. it's very clinical yeah. doctors use it the police yeah. use it homosexual. <gasps> right oh no so they came up with some other options right which is fair because that's a mouthful of mm-hmm. homosexual, homosexual. Yes. um so queens okay yeah we remember which those now we still use right? those still now. Use, carried over. you'll see some of this does now, does, queen, then, now, does queen then because well, obviously the band queen as well because yeah. we know um but uh in this tense did it mean any homosexual, or was it more of a freely homosexual, like we were talking about, just oh, across the board? It's gay man. Queens across the board. All right, yes. good for us. <laughs> and then you have Omi, which is man, and uh, Polonus, which is Speaker. woman. Okay. okay. So another word for gay men would be Omi Polonus, like male okay. man. Um, Zhush. 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 Lots of us know what shush means. Yeah. It means to like to, to pretty yourself up. Kind of to like, like, yeah. It needs a little, a little more zhuzh. We say that all the time. A right. Little bit yeah. extra. Yeah. Totally. Yeah. <laughs> um, BMQ. BMQ. Mm. Black market queen. Ooh. Okay. Okay. It was a term for someone who's... Opposed to the mm. open market queen? Yes. Yes. <laughs> Actually, exactly. Yes. So it's a closeted man. Oh, I gotcha. Particularly if he was a merchant marine. Okay. The merchant marines were also called sea queens. I love Because I they were I just instantly the thought of a manatee, but yes. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> they wouldn't have because they don't live in Britain, but it's fine. <laughs> uh, cod. See, cod, like the fish? Like, like the, the fish. fish. Okay. Was awful. Okay, um, I mean, I don't like cods. So I'm like, oh, that makes sense. <laughs> awful like bad, not awful as in your organs, right? Yes. Okay. okay. <laughs> no, not oh, the awful. Okay, 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 like, right, yes, yes, ugh, yes. that's awful. <laughs> it's so cold. Um, they also came up with really... That takes a really interesting twist on the term cod piece, doesn't it? <laughs> right? <laughs> so that's what I would say. Whenever I have bad dick now, I'm like, oh, such a cod piece. <laughs> well, we also have like, oh God, she smells like fish. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Mm, it's true. Okay. Cod, fish. fish yeah. It is a type of fish. It is a type of fish. Might have a tie there. Oh, yeah. um, they also had really interesting names for the police. So my all-time favorite is a uh, Lily Law, Lily Law, <laughs> or just like oh Lily, like yeah, yeah. oh Lily's been around like oh, the what police the cops here. Yeah. here. Um, you and your so, Lily White eyes, that's the thing. So I have a couple right. of uh, little some like some sentences. I know right. she's like, Whoop. I was like, let's see the words. That could be fun. All right. All right, the Dilly has the bona trade. Ooh, the Dilly. I heard something about pretty. Say again. The dilly? The dilly? The dilly. Has the bona trade. Mm. Nice piece of ass? Yeah! Yay! I mean, so, I mean, you're heading in the right direction. Um, so, the dilly was Polari for the Piccadilly Circus. Okay. okay. Which is where many male prostitutes hung out. So, 
the Dilly. Which is a part of London for those that are not familiar with the UK. Oh, it's yeah. not circus like. No, it's a big square, basically. Yeah. It's a big okay. big town, city square. It's not a town, it's a big city yeah. square. Um, and so that's. As a what, child, I was also confused by that. I'm like, I'm not a circus here. <laughs> and then trade is like a sex partner. So okay. Okay. the Dilly has the bone of trade. So that's where you get means, like, It's got the best trade, it's got okay. the best prostitutes. Yeah, you go. Okay. The trade, as it were. Okay. So I wasn't completely wrong. No, you were really, nice just idea. assume it's all sexy or in both. Right, spots. I was like, hmm. <laughs> uh, that Ami has a pogey cart. That man's got a gimp leg. I don't know. <laughs> has Very a close. Oh, or a bad dick. dick. <laughs> oh, it's between the two. So it's uh, that guy's got a small dick. Oh, <laughs> small dick. There you go. Uh, and then huh, now this what is was a, a small dick. Uh, pogey cart. A pogey cart. Yes, pogey cart. I you know what? Like pogey, like pogo you know, stick. You know, my 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 grandmother used to get angry at men, and she used to say pogey all the time. And now I'm beginning to wonder if she knew this word or if she just thought it was aggressive somehow. I mean, she might. She so she was like pogey, 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 and I'm like, I don't know if the pogey means small or the pogey means dick, but anyway, uh, the pogey means small. Oh yeah, okay. but so she small. might have been being like, like oh, you small, you small man. Maybe, probably. probably. I've known her, so yeah. Uh, yeah. So, yeah. and the last one is. I will preface this. Oh, ready. This is about a sexual experience with Okay. Steve. Oh, okay. Sexual experience. So, All right. oh, I helped him with his dishes. His plates were fantabulous. His plates? Is it about eating ass? Because, I mean, you eat off dishes, so I assume you're eating something, so sucking dick or eating ass. Good enough. So, she's like, I'm going for you it. You have the first, you have the first, the first half. portion. So, Dish is ass. Oh, yeah. Or, like, butt. So, you helped him with his dishes. Okay. You fucked his ass. Like, oh, you, you helped him with his ass. Oh, okay. Uh, and then his plates were fantabulous. One of the other things that, types of slang that was really pulled in was rhyming slang, the cockney. So, plates kind of sound like beats when you're, like, going through. So, like, I had sex with that guy. His feet were amazing. Oh, okay. okay. Like, so fantabulous is actually a combination. It's fantastic and fabulous. Right. Which still stuck together. around. Because, like, growing up, I'm always like, oh, yeah, fantabulous. Not because of, oh, well, yeah. because of Polari, but not in that context. It just carried just on. Know. So, yeah. So, it, it's. There you go. I helped him with his dishes. His plates were fantabulous. Fucked him, and I liked his, his feet. feet. There you go. There you yep. <laughs> Um, so some other... So we've got my hands. Would it be in the saucers? I don't know. I'm trying. <laughs> I don't know. I'll have to look it up. I'll have to go use the, um... The Bible. The, yeah, yeah, the... Bible. Reference the Bible. Polari Bible. The from Bible the talks about Scissors hands, of right? Perpetual Indulgence. Yeah. Love you all. Be like, hands? What are the hands? What are the mitts? <laughs> they gave us some of their words. We shared our sisters. Yes. <laughs> it works out well. Right? Um... So some of these words I totally want to bring back, right? Mm-hmm. Because they're fantastic, and it. Would I mean, I'm going to keep saying pogey. Yeah, right? for sure. Right? Uh, yeah, I might start using lally, which okay. is like legs. The lallies. Like, oh, the lallies. Got to do. lollipop sticks. <laughs> it's not really? lolly. It's lally. Well, she's like whatever. Enough. That's how I'm going to remember it. Lally lollies. <laughs> we all know the kinkaboo issue, so like. <laughs> <laughs> Yes. I will perpetually have the wrong I literally words cannot in my read head. that word without hearing your you saying kinkaboo first. Me either. And I'm like, kinkaboo. Oh, kinkaboo. <laughs> How long have we been together before I knew that you said it that way? A while. It was a year and a half. <laughs> <What? laughs> yeah. 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 Timelines are okay. weird. Oh uh, yeah. Kinkaboo. But yeah, a while. It was a thing. <laughs> I never had to hear it out loud before. No, it's precious. You don't have to defend it. It's just, it's just, it's also catchy, unfortunately. <laughs> oh, and I'm gonna shove this back into another yeah, part. Yeah. But one of the really cool things is that this is considered an anti-language. Okay. Okay. So, an anti-language is a language that's spoken by people on the edges of society, born out of rebellion against the mainstream, and it's spoken only by the people in the minority. Okay. So it would kind of go hand in hand with counterculture. Yeah. Okay. So I'm just trying to make ties for my own like history lessons of. Do, do. I think she's like now that I've learned this word, I'm not yeah, letting go of yeah. it. <laughs> so I think anti-language is the linguistic 
version of counterculture as like a larger looking okay. at all of counterculture you'd look at like all of what made that culture a culture mm-hmm. and then this is, is just, just this okay. like yeah okay. but, helps but yes stick. you can put it under that umbrella whatever helps mm-hmm. the stick <laughs> hell yeah all right <laughs> cool do you cool. guys yeah. have questions no, I think loads. I'm gonna look up the Bible. Right, yeah. Right. Shit, I want to see what other like Cockney phrases I know that are no longer Cockney, but apparently, because <laughs> I'm like, oh, I'm questioning everything now. <laughs> <laughs> gonna have to go back. <laughs> Going through some of the lists, I was like, I, I use that, and I use that. Yeah. Hat. I was like, hat. I did it. You know? Yeah. I'll I don't know what they mean by it, but I knew it means like it's you know, you it's everywhere. I think yeah. it's everywhere because you can't. You know, without swinging a cat hit it or something like that. And I'm like, oh. Yeah. No, and I think the point of, like, you know, it's everywhere and that it has continued on ties a lot into kind of, like, what I looked into because I was like, trying to look for an American version of this almost. Mm-hmm. Um, and the history is kind of scattered, but a lot of it is still used, at least, like, in the LGBTQ community, which is what it's made for. Um and so, like, I've been exposed to some, like, there's really nothing there that's hidden. And I was like, oh, it's because I speak it, But apparently. even slang, like, it doesn't but have to be, like, it. quite as quite as intense right. or secretive as as the yeah. as this example. But even just the modern slang, it's yeah. still, for all, you know, there's some, there's some fogies out there that don't know what certain slang means. Yeah. And there so, are some not fogies who just aren't part of our yeah. culture who are like, why did you call it that? The like, because that's what you call that thing? Right. Right, yeah. And so, like, I found a lot of, like, LGBT slang um, that we hear a lot in, like, the gay community and leather community. So things like talking about bears and otters. They, things like that. People are like, why are you talking about animals? There's a whole menagerie like, out there. Get well, out there. <laughs> a bear is going to be, like, a hairy gay man. Big, big hairy, hairy gay man. Big yeah, hairy yeah. gay man. Like, a bear hug. Like, it's exactly what you're imagining. Teddy bear. It's exactly yes. what you're imagining, guys. Oh, uh, and then otters might be more of like the medium build gay man, hairy gay man, um, and then things the like hair like, factor oh. is really important, though, it right? Is. Like it's, it's very important with like the categories and where you fall into. Yeah. Um, and then like things like twink. I remember the first time I heard twink, I was like. Are they talking about like Twinkies, like the like the like the dessert? <laughs> See, food? I mean they're cream filled, but it's <laughs> yeah, they are, they are cream filled. I think when I in English when I first heard Twink, obviously like yeah. the second language and it's different. The slang is different. I thought they only referred to methods. That's oh. a tweak. Tweak, yes. <laughs> yes. And I was like, <laughs> I was like, like what? what? A tweaker? Oh, that's a method. It's <laughs> not what we're talking about. Oh, twink, like. Like kind of like Tinkerbell almost, like yeah, dainty, like little dainty or young. Is, is it always young, young or is it I feel like mainly it's young. young? It's mainly young. Yeah. I mean, I don't, I don't see many like forty-year-old self-identified twinks. Yeah. No. If you're no. one of these, if you're a forty-year-old twink, please let me know. Right. <laughs> and let me know if your siblings will allow you to call yourself yeah. that. And similar to Polari, like a lot of it is to describe people. Yeah. Like to uh, be able to identify someone. Both in a, like, hey, I can say something to you, and if you respond, you know what I'm saying, right. then I know that you're one of me. Yeah. And yeah. also, we can be snarky, catty bitches. And everyone's like, hmm. Huh? About, right. you know, whoever's the, the people in the there. bar. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> yeah. And, like, it does carry over some phrases, too. So, like, friend of Dorothy is basically what I mean. Some indicates that somebody is gay. Mm-hmm. Which, or, for those that don't know, Friends of Dorothy is a reference to the Wizard of Oz. Mm-hmm. Yes. That's where Which that I didn't know was considered a, like one of the like perpetual gay films. Your alpha Have you about seen it. that movie? I have. <laughs> most, I think it no it was times <laughs> as a child. It was it was our boy. He lunch, had seen it. He had, had seen not it. seen it. Well, yeah, that's he the one that's seen a lot. If it's not Godzilla, yeah, he the boy has not seen, seen it. it. Yeah, <laughs> we're working on. No, it. I know. We're working but on it. I'm just like gay ass movie over the rainbow. Yeah, and so, like, you know, it kind of goes back into that and a lot of describing, especially, like, when you get into, like, the different, like, categories of, like, gays and lesbians. So, like, we had, like, the bears and ours, but then you have, like, butches, fans. Um, Footches. Footches. And if you're a woman of color, you got studs and you got mm-hmm. stems, which mm-hmm. is their version. If yes. you are a white woman. Don't use it, please. You're not a stud. No. Sorry. <laughs> you're not. I have been in some areas where they wouldn't use stud, they use stone. So stone, stone butch, I think, is, is a little different, right? A yeah. stone butch is typically a butch. They don't want to be touched. Yeah. It's They'll more about your it. preferences. 
And stone yeah. bu- stone butches are usually they're like usually I'll more sensitive you. about don't touch, don't touch my breasts in particular, don't touch my vulva. They don't want they want to only do the touching. They don't want to be touched, right. typically speaking. Like, I've always heard it, like, in kind of, like, to counteract pillow princesses who people get the idea of, like, oh, they'll only A pillow only princess be, like, and a stone, stone are, are perfect, perfect for each other. Because they only want to receive. They don't want to do the They want to receive, and this one doesn't want to be touched. So that, yeah. those yeah. are perfect couples. <laughs> Match made in heaven. <laughs> Match made oh. in heaven. <laughs> but they like, never find each other, but they do exist separately in the world. <laughs> yes. They do. Odd how they like I'm more of a stone together. top. I'm more yeah. of a stone top. I'm not a butch, but I'm more of a stone top. I don't like being touched. I like doing the touching. Mm-hmm. So that's kind of what that works out. Yeah. Um, and then like even some of the stuff that some of the terminology. Not tough enough to be butch. <laughs> <laughs> you do pull off that. I love the foot. I love being well. the foot category. I love being in the middle, but mm-hmm. I'm just not. Oh, I'm too soft. <laughs> <laughs> um. And then, like, some of what I found interesting while I was looking into it, the terms that I wouldn't consider really, like, to be part of wrestling, but are Mm. specifically in how we've started to evolve in describing, like, different sexual orientations and things like that. Um, But, like, you know, now it's becoming where, like, you know, people who are in the gay community now don't know. So, like, things like allosexual. They're like, what's allosexual? It's normal sexual attraction like you don't fall into asexual or you don't have any sexual attraction things like that and then well, that's like um, when the word cisgender was introduced yeah. to cisgender people and they're like that's the there's like what oh you mean normal no i mean i mean cisgender Gender. i yeah. think that people forget that language is an ever evolving thing, thing. Right. exactly the terms that we use now are not the terms that we used in 2000 they're not right. the terms no. that we used in the 1900 right like Things evolve. Things change. Words come. Right. They go. They change meaning. Right. Um, the F word and the Q and queer. Oh, yeah. you mean like a cigarette? The F word. Yes. Yeah. Gotcha. Um, you know, nowadays people are we reclaiming it now. People are, but very few. Like yeah. lots of people are still like, you don't just walk up to me and like, hey, you're a no. F word. Yeah. Right. Uh. British cigarette word. <laughs> um, you don't do I'll that. say it if I'm gonna like I'm gonna light up and then you know, but I'm not I would right. I wouldn't say it here. Right. In America that much. Right. I would say it back in Europe, but I wouldn't say it here. Right. <laughs> um the same way we don't say the I'll N you, word. I'll let your boy like, I'll let your boy do that. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> he's like, You can smoke me anytime. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. I was like, I'm I don't know. He's attracted to power and leather. <laughs> yes. Yeah. So that's, yes. I mean, that's right. I can't blame him for saying. But. Yeah. Oh. Um, but then we have words like queer, mm-hmm. which yeah. went back in the same time that like 50s, 60s, when a lot of the language you're talking about and the language that I was discussing, like that was something that was thrown at people right. as a negative term. Right, right. Like, but now a lot of us are reclaiming it. Yeah. And while not everyone is comfortable with it, some of us are. And we're like, this describes us. We're going to claim it. So yeah. words change. Yeah, like, I don't say I'm a queer. I say I'm queer. Like, yeah. it's, like a, it's more of an adjective than a noun in my – for me. Yeah, the only time I'm yeah. queer, like, is, is an adjective. As Unless I'm, like, like, giving a list, like, I'm a queer, indigenous, duh, 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 Like, and I'm giving, right. like, a yeah. length of, right. of my label stamps. Right. But, I'll say a blah. But – Otherwise, so it's, it's, I'm it's an additive, you know what yeah. I mean? It's not like... Yeah, and kind of similar, similarly to, like, the Polari and, like, you know, the shows and stuff, we've seen a big influx of that with the drag community. Um, Especially so, with it mainstreaming. Yeah. Especially with, that, with the becomes, drag culture mainstreaming really hard. Then. Right, and it's so, like people are picking up on my things, and so, like, spilling the tea. The tea means you're going to have something to talk about. The first time, my niece said that to me. You're like, One, I was like, I love it. Two, where the hell did you learn that? Because she was like 12 at the time. And I was like, what like awesome old gay person are you talking to besides like right. me and, and the gunkles when you visit? Like, yeah. No, like, I have it, the she got it from Drag Queen. She's and like, I have the internet. Yeah. <laughs> right. like, she, like, loves, okay. <laughs> she loves Drag Queen. So she's all about, and I was like, oh, but yeah, literally she had no idea that that was necessarily like, a gay terminology. Yeah. She just knew it was a drag queen yeah. word. Like, yeah. they said it, it's great. I love the meaning. I'm going with it. Yeah, and I think Rock a lot on. of people Rock don't on. realize that now because, you know, we have the internet. So, like, the memes come out and this comes out and you'll hear, you, like, the I'll tea. hear my mother, the the I'll hear my mother say, 
oh, you have some tea? I'm like, bitch, I know you don't watch Drag Race or anything like that. Like, but she works in education, so she's around kids all day who have access to all of these things and are starting to pick up on the phrases. And remember, boys, girls, and gentlemen. Yes. Careful where you spill tea because it stains. Ooh. <laughs> I was going to wear some wisdom from Adam Hex. <laughs> uh, Spill all the tea you want, but remember it stains. <laughs> can, can I make that a sound bite? Yes! 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 <laughs> Just going to take that one clip and make you a sound bite. Yes! Fuck it me. Huh. Yeah, I think this whole side of the table just got wet, and that's not normally <laughs> my job. Oh, we didn't put a towel under her, damn it. I didn't think this is good. <laughs> It's know. always going to be one of those I episodes. Know. You know this. Yes. I know. Um, but Just like, more than two over there. The <laughs> but like some of the other ones that have come about too is like hunty. Like oh, hunty. Hunty. <laughs> like let me get you, which is basically just an over emphasis on honey mm-hmm. that's used a lot in reference to somebody else. And so like we see that coming up a lot. That or like even people being like, Yes! Oh, with, with the like, A. Y-A. Yes. 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 I love, I love yes. the memes with the shark going, yeah. Yes! Because <laughs> that's what I mean when I say it. <laughs> Great white shark breaching out of the water. <laughs> but like, um, you know, or, you know, being snatched. Oh, get your wig snatched. Yes. Slay uh, all that. <laughs> mm-hmm. Slayed, to kill it, you know, um, to work, W-E-R-K. You better work. Um, Throwing shade, we hear that. At least I hear that one everywhere. Everyone throws all shade the all the time. Now. Get my reading glasses ready because the library is open. open. <laughs> <laughs> yes. The library is always open. <laughs> or like to read somebody. New read somebody. You're, going, you're about to tell them something about themselves. Mm-hmm. Um, or even like to Kiki to go yeah. and have a talk. Yep. Things like that. And so, like, those are starting to come about. Um, and, like, you know, some older ones that have been around for a long time, like Campy, things like that. I was watching, I was scrolling through Netflix with my mom the other night, and she was like, oh, what's that Dragula thing? I was like, think Drag Race and Fear Factor had a baby. I was like, but the <laughs> intro. bad I like, description. It's, I was like, it's, I really like it. It's interesting. I was like, I but the it. opening scenes are always, like, kind of campy. And she's like, like, they're outside? I was like. Okay, that word, has, and that word has been around since the 80s because it's also used to describe things like bad movies, yeah. horror films, but with a seat camping. Right. Not Being like, like not the over the camp. top of like, something. Yeah. Funny, inadvertently, you know, right. like kind of. That's actually a Polari word that was either meant for known as male prostitute right. or somebody who was like drag queen. Over they didn't the top. have that word yet. Yeah. Over the top, right? Yeah. So kind that's like probably where it came to with the C yeah. in English to mean more of kind of like this. Cause, goofy kind of thing. Because drag was a word that they had for women's clothes, like wearing yeah. women's clothing. Right. And then camp was like very much associated with that, like overwhelmingly flamboyant. And that's when you see things. You see campy drag queens, which right. are yeah. less fishy and you know, are more like kind of the caricature of womanhood, I think, is when I think of a campy drag queen. It's yeah. More of a caricature than like the fishy ones. That entire sentence. <laughs> <laughs> It's what we're talking about because you're like, oh yeah, like the campy ones as opposed to the fishy ones. And we're like, yes, yes. The fishy ones are the ones where you're like, is that a woman? And it's like, "Eh." the the super passable ones. Super passable ones, the fishy, you know, because again, like fish denotes typically vagina. So therefore, the fishy ones tend to be the more passable drag queens. I love me a good catch one though. Yeah. (laughs) Yeah, and then like, and then, of course, you know, there are things that fall back onto, like, the describing, like, pointing someone out. So, like, one of the ones that I was like, huh, I've heard that so many times, I had no idea what I meant. And it's the hundred footer. And so it's like, <laughs> they're obviously See them gay or feet lesbian. Away. Fucking, like, a light post. Right. right. And so I'm like, huh, okay. There's and flamers then, and then there's Olympic torches, okay? <laughs> and then I'm sitting there, I'm like, <laughs> thinking through all these previous conversations of, like, huh. Like your boy's post where his mom was like, "Are you gonna let us have boy game in?" Yes, yes, I, was yes like, I am. He's going to be. He's okay. Have you <laughs> met him? Like, you both can you know. <laughs> how many times do I get uh, drunk uh, makeup photo shoots yes. from him? Oh, it was his so memory of him in that that leopard coat at the thrift shop. <laughs> he said <laughs> to his mother. <laughs> <sighs> yeah. But no, so I thought it was really cool because I'm like, you know, a lot of these, I'm like, oh, well, I know them, but then I'm looking more into them and like looking at descriptions, like, footer, yeah. oh, a lot of people probably don't know that that's what that's about. So are there some unusual words on that list? There are. Do you want me to read them? 
Okay. Or you can test us on it. Do oh, we yeah. know the terminology? Oh, yeah. I want a vocab lesson. Let's oh, do this. Yeah. Um, so, Go easy on me. Okay. <laughs> so a chicken. A chicken? Do you know what that is? No. It's a super young, like... Oh, like, a, like a spring chicken. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. And then it's like the counterpart to a chicken hawk. Oh, you know what? That's in the... Yeah, okay. <laughs> it's not like the man... You know, let me talk you off. Not yet. Okay, that's like the, the man version of the cougar, is it? Oh, I guess, yeah. It's the last bit. It's the last bit. We'll just, <laughs> just drop it off. Um, so a Copenhagen Kappen. Copenhagen Kappen? Kappen? How do you spell Kappen? C-A-P-O-N. No oh my this is actually a lyric in a song uh-huh. that i absolutely love was it oh, i don't okay. know it's in reference to a transsexual person um and so because it references castration oh and so it's to say that oh they're becoming the other oh well that's interesting yeah so that's one of the like older ones that that puts that i was song thinking, into, I was like, thinking a like cap new... on like, a, like i don't know <laughs> like your yeah. uniforms i don't know <laughs> um, let's see okay so a uh, cotton ceiling Cotton ceiling. Mm-hmm. Is this a sexy reference or is this like a give us a clue? Uh, yeah, it's, it's, a clue. it's about sex. It's particularly about someone who has sex with another someone. Like they're two different. They only things. fuck white people. No. Damn it. <laughs> that would have they been only fuck though, old people. Old people. Yeah. <laughs> um, so it's like, like cotton. I don't know. So it's like white hair. Like, yeah. So it's um Come a here? reference to a lesbian. Um, Refusal to have sex with trans women if they haven't undergone uh, gender reassignment Cotton, or mean surgeons. Like, because uh, like a tampon, <laughs> like the Playtex ceiling. I don't want to, yeah. it's not a vagina. And I don't want to like, go do it. And it's like some of these, I'm like, I don't, and like, there's a reason I haven't heard these because I don't think they're thrown around much anymore. But I'm like looking through them, I was like, wow, the history is really interesting. Cotton some of these. ceiling. I want to know where that came from. I'm just a joking about of, the tampon thing, but I'm thinking yeah. maybe. But I mean, maybe. <laughs> it might be good. Well, for me, I'm like, well, maybe the balls because they're That's, hairy, like cotton. No, 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 not at all. No, I don't know. I mean, it's probably been a while since you've been around a set of balls, but they're not <laughs> shaped like God, cotton balls. They are. You should probably see them. They're the same size. <laughs> see you, but, doctor. A, another similarity is that. They're very descriptive, but they're also, like, some of them are just fucking mean. Yeah, like, there's a lot of Some mean of ones. the, like, and Polari had a lot of those, too, where you're just like, Damn. You're oh. Like, so I'm like, do I want to read Harsh. that? Harsh. Well, like, like, the whole catty and gay thing has been going on for a millennia. Right. Oh, yes. Yes, uh, yes, yes. Not a fresh take, guys. <laughs> uh, <laughs> no hot takes here. I'm sorry. <laughs> let's see. What else is there? Oh, hey, fish is on here. Ah, oh, hey, fishy, fishy. fishy. <laughs> um, I'll be like, mm, sorry, girl, Pisces season is over. <laughs> Ooh, an egg. An egg, a bold person, a bold no. man. No. Oh, a baby gay? A super, kind of. A super duper baby gay? Like, kind of. like my first night out baby gay? Not A not kid that's growing yet. up to be? Is it, a, is it a gay who doesn't know they're gay yet? It's. In reference to a transgender person who doesn't realize they're trans yet. Oh, okay. We were on the track. We were yeah. in the so right like, direction. Right. New. New uh, was a baby correct, trans. But new at yeah. what? <laughs> baby. Uh, okay. Do, 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 do. What else is on here? Oh, cottaging. Cottaging? Oh, that's cottaging. shacking up. Yeah. Where, though? In a cottage. No. <laughs> in a shed. <laughs> in a... In an alleyway. In an alleyway. <laughs> Specifically in a public bathroom. Okay. Oh, because yeah. a cottage is then a I've cottaged a number of times. Okay. Like, <laughs> cottaging all over the place. <laughs> uh, there's a, not the university I'm at now, but a different university in the state that I cottaged at. There you go. Quite often that I go. never attended. There you go. That's fair. Well, then no, 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 okay. it's not my not school. Not Bye. <laughs> Let's see. Cottaging. I was just imagining two lesbians baking a pie and like. I was trying. Oh, is that like that's, U-Hauling? No, that's cottage core. That's different. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, if they like decorated the bathroom right. so then it could be like cottaging in the they cottage core. They might be that lesbians. I don't know. <laughs> um, Tiny houses to a whole new level. <laughs> just a toilet. It's just a toilet. <laughs> um, and then the last one uh, is cafeteria. Cafeteria. That's where you get food. So is that like when you're cruising? Mm. Or somebody who just feeds like fucks anything okay because they like feed everybody kind of but not quite um so it's repeated fellatio in a bathroom or bathhouse really 
Yeah. We're repeating with the like, same me. person, so like, like or multiple I, cops. Like, I would assume. Oh, I would like assume you're just working your way down the line. Yeah, you maybe. Cafeteria cell, you get a little bit as you everything. Go down the line. So yeah, I would say I would say it's probably. And if you so are it, someone who knows this term and uses yes. this term, or is a fan of cafeteriaing, let us know yeah. what the mechanics are, because we're so imagining like, you just working your way down the assembly line. Well, and it, could there be a differentiation? Like, oh, I'm serving the cafeteria today. Like, oh, like I'm oh, one of the yeah. ones like, come on yeah. in, I'm in line. Or like, oh, yeah. I'm servicing. Am I the food or are you the cafeteria lady? I'm not sure. Who's the yeah. cafeteria lady in this case? Right? I want to know. I have questions yes. and I will unfortunately Google this later. Right? Well, because then I'm like, wait. <laughs> I won't like, unfortunately. I just will. But then I'm like, okay, but then would you be gagging? Are flagging like food play or oil? Would you be gagging food play? You <laughs> would yeah, be gagging, me, yes. But other people, no. Right. But you're in a back house, like, sweetheart. You're not flagging anything. You got no clothes on. That's, oh, that's true. <laughs> you just have yeah, your mouth sense. open. <laughs> yeah. Okay. I mean, if the night's going well, yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah right. the night's going well. <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, so I found a lot of those um, interesting. I was surprised how many I knew, but I was also surprised like how many I was like, huh. Did we look up any, did you look up any, like, specifically leather or, like, kink fetish ones or just kind of, like, gay? I didn't. I really just looked at okay. gay. I tried looking up the BDSM and kink and leather ones, and I really couldn't get anything on the site. I think my browser thing at home was probably blocking a lot of it. Oh, yeah, because you uh, have to now. <laughs> Talk about being shoved back in the closet. Right, but you mentioned flagging. Yes. Which was kind of, like, I think our last topic, kind of, of the evening. We talked a lot about, like, verbal secret communications and things like that. Mm-hmm. So we're going to hit a little bit on the nonverbal. Ooh. When we've talked about this before, right, we've talked about the hanky code, as it were, mm-hmm. in a couple episodes. We talked about, like, with this color and this color, we use this and that. But... I thought I'd give a uh, shamefully brief rundown of the hanky code, as we know it in kind of BDSM, other kink, fetish community, whatever you want to say. Um, as we know it today, it was kind of developed, perfected, and popularized in the 1970s. Um, it was predominantly at that time used by gay men. Um, we wanted to be, well, we, I'm not, not me because I'm not a man. You wanted to be able to kind of covertly let somebody at the bar know what you were into. So it has fetishes, it has, um, I guess you could call them kinks too, um, associated or sexual acts associated with the different colors. And depending on how you wore it, said what role you played. If you wore it on the left side, you were top. You wore it on the right side, you was the bottom. This is how we know it was developed primarily with men is because it assumed you had pockets. <laughs> A, yes. Yes. B, uh, I used to regularly forget which direction it went. Well, lucky you're a switch, so you know. <laughs> <laughs> right. Just but I, but not <laughs> everything I do switches. Right, right, right. So the way that I had to finally remember was that it literally corresponds with D slash S for dominant submissive. Yeah, yeah. Like, that's a good re- that's a of it reminder. Is like that's actually yeah. a helpful reminder, bottom. especially yeah. if you're just getting it's into like, it or if you just confuse your lefts and your rights. I've been doing yeah. it for like 20 years and I still feel still think about to. it. Still like, I still have to be like, <laughs> yep, yeah, mm-hmm, I got it. <laughs> Particularly because I'm a switch, so it depends yeah, on the day. Really. For me, it's more so just the like, whole thing. Okay, one, where is my right? This is my right. Okay. Like, who am I today? I don't know. Um, so concurrently at the time in the 70s when the kind of more well-known kind of gay man hanky code was being brought into existence, a lesbian version was also happening in San Francisco. Samoa is one of the first, um, instituted kind of leather dyke, uh, societies or groups or whatever you want to say. And they actually penned down their version of mm-hmm. the Leather Dyke Hanky Code, but that wasn't published until Coming to Power was published in 1980. So it had been going on for a decade, it just wasn't published until then because they were suddenly like, I think other women might want to know what we're doing. What we're doing. <laughs> and we've talked before that regionally, mm-hmm. you know, whether it's in the States or in other countries, the colors are different, the meanings yeah. are different. So if you're looking to use it, you can Google a list, but you might want to ask specifically in your area, area what this color means and a good especially example. if you're getting into like the more intricate colors right and like desires I think, like we've talked before like yellow is pretty much always going to be water sports red yeah. is pretty much always going to be fisting black is pretty much going to be heavy s&m so mm-hmm. you have some that are going to be typical but as we've discussed like uh oh, lottie yeah. she wore pink because she likes to use a strap on she's a dildo fucker but it can also mean armpit sex mm-hmm so yeah, your alpha made a good example of asking her, does your pink mean your yes, armpit sex or that you're a dildo fucker? Because he has that knowledge base. 
So that's why it's good to always ask what you're into anyway. Yeah. I also find that some people don't know what their colors are. For sure. Because, <laughs> like, it'll be, like, periwinkle blue, which is a specific blue. And then they're not wearing that. And you're like, oh, are you into blah, blah, blah? And they're like, no, I want this other thing. Like, yeah. that's I, not the right color. Yeah, no, I'm always <laughs> You're like, colorblind. But especially when it gets the, the, more, the more specific ones. more specific ones, I'm like, ooh, like, if this fades, is it going to start to look <laughs> is this like this? robin's egg blue, blue or, or light blue? blue. Right. Is this oh maroon God. or more red? red? Is it, you yeah. know, like, huh, story of which life. again, ask. Right. It's yeah. really like it's nowadays it's more of a conversation starter for like the big ones across the corner or if you are looking for something super specific chances are you're probably going to talk about it. Yeah. And it's not necessarily in I mean in some places it's still criminalized but in our local community here it's not you're not going to be arrested for going to the bar and trying to ask another if you're a woman or a man trying to ask somebody of the same gender to take a piss on you. Probably not. As long as it's not in the public, public nudity. parking lot. Uh, right. you know? But again, depends on your parking <laughs> lot. Um, so that's one of the things. So uh, there was kind of a decrease in the use of the hanky code as the 80s kind of trailed on. Um, and that was primarily having to do with the, the AIDS epidemic. Mm-hmm. Um, the thing was that, you know, we, I think your, your alpha talked about it a little bit where there was this motion that BDSM is a safer sex, right? Um, because it involved this negotiation, this conversation. The use of hankies specifically for cruising for sexual acts, unprotected sexual acts, was in decline as a response to this. Mm -hmm. But that's also where you get hankies like the black and white checked for safe sex practices. Mm -hmm. And so it was kind of like a new way of using an old system to let people know these are the practices that I use and a way of trying to help mitigate new infections and things like that. So it kind of had this weird period in the 80s Um, In the 90s, it actually had a huge comeback, and not for the reasons we think. Uh, It fell, of course, into mainstream fashion. Yeah. Flagging and bandana use Mm -hmm. um, for kind of like these. It was a whole thing. And and there was a lot of artists that really helped popularize that in the 90s. You know, we had Tomo Finland, Jean uh, Bilnu, uh, John Willie, and Sayo Itu in Japan really popularized the Americana Leatherman look in a mm-hmm. lot of their work, as well as um, now Saitu did a lot of. He's like the the grandpappy of Kinbaku. <laughs> <laughs> she had to think about it. I was like, so bad <laughs> <laughs> a lot of his art, most of his artwork is rope and tailed, but he incorporated these colors into his art, usually in like floral prints and things like that. So he was drawing on that for inspiration, but incorporating it into a more kind of local Sweet. flavor as it were Sweet. so that really helped the 90s everything take off and then you see uh, you know and, and it wasn't just in uh mainstream fashion for the gay community mm-hmm. it was mainstream fashion for everyone the straights as well like they were they were using these yeah in yeah. a very more like you know james brando kind right. of bad boy <laughs> well, kind of bandana you know and all these like macho guys wearing theirs on the right side thinking they're <laughs> badass because they're right-handed and you're like oh so use a bottom not yeah. there's anything wrong with being a bottom, but I do like doing that, especially uh, in motorcycle culture. Mm-hmm. My favorite. I'm like, oh, so you're a bottom. <laughs> <laughs> I could tell. <laughs> I could tell. Um, we still use it. I mean, yeah. you, we talked about it. I think the leather and fetish community still mm-hmm. uses it. And I, I, so I don't know if I think it's the mainstream gay community really uses it unless they are also kind of kinky adjacent. I don't I know. I would say, like, the, the het pan side of it didn't use hanky as much until the last six to eight years. Yeah. Um, when I first started going out, meeting people, it was not a thing. Mm-hmm. People didn't know. Like, you'd see them every once in a while, yeah. but it wasn't a regular thing. Now it is much more mainstream yeah. within the het pan Right, I mean, yeah. leather is an overarching, but yeah. differentiating. But it's the growing at different rates because even like mm-hmm. I'm starting to notice it more in the like the brief time that I've been in the local community, which is only like four to five. Well, no, eighteen, so six years. No, so one part like, of it. So one part of it. No. Oh yeah, four. Eight. Eight. <laughs> I'm like, uh, not a math major. Sorry. One part of it I'm is. 20, wait, no, I'm twenty four, and then eighteen, six. Okay. Oh, sorry, twenty eighteen. Okay. So. So 
part of it is yes a growing awareness as Mark said in like the hat pan space I think another part is that you may be now knowing what you're looking for too yeah so you're seeing it more you're just kind of like once That's, you ride a motorcycle yeah, you see them fucking everywhere, everywhere. before once you ride a motorcycle you're like one, yeah, you, you see, see like one motorcycle every 10 years you're like oh someone drives a motorcycle that's so weird but then once you like ride a motorcycle you're like, like there's a lot of fucking bikes out today <laughs> <laughs> I was like oh I wonder what events going on today is there you're a like, I nothing none of them are related they're just going about their business yeah. but I think Knowing what to look for, whether it's kind of a secret language or what to listen for, I guess, um, or whether it's how you dress or or a slang that you use or something like that. Once you're aware of its existence, the whole world kind of changes. The whole lens changes, and it's very exciting. And then you like you feel like you're part of a little secret club, even <laughs> though it's not like super secret. super secret anymore. But you do feel like you've become yeah. part of that world, even kind of if it's by accident like watching drag show and you're now talking about spilling the tea all of a sudden <laughs> yeah yeah you have some snoots um i do have some snoots I lost, has a snoot? all, oh. I lost one already but the other one was like you were talking you were talking about flagging and like the different variations and how it became kind of more popular and mainstream culture the biggest one i think of is since i learned that it in like the lesbian world using nail colors and accent nails flagging mm-hmm. i'm like I used to do that all the time in high school just because that's when it started to become a trend for everyone to do. They do all of their nails one color except for the ring finger and that's a different color. And I'm like, oh, I never would have worn those colors. Right. And again, it's one of those things where it's you super- could, you, in that sense, it wasn't that you had to have your nail colors to match your flagging colors. Yeah. It's just if the nail was a yeah. different color, you was gay. Or if you had a <laughs> pinky ring on. Sometimes, right sometimes. Ring, I mean, finger. sometimes. They were also just big in the 60s, yeah. too. The pinky rings were big. Pinky and thumb rings yeah. were big in the 60s. But so there is some conversation about how much gay that was. But, I mean, I would think you put your pinky out. You it's probably also the 60s. Okay. It's yeah. also the 60s. So, so like, compared to that point. probably a lot of gay and a lot of not gay and a lot of not gay. It was probably not just a, sure lot of, they're gay. a lot of fun sex in the yes. 60s, I feel. Um, so, yeah, the little accents there. You know, it used to be cocktail napkins instead mm-hmm. of the bandanas keys. became keys, you know, things Tucked like that. Tucked in left out. So... Don't be afraid to play around with some of these languages. Definitely, like, for the ones that are, like, you know, Polari is, like, a proper thing. Like, look it up. Understand its history. Respect it. Play with it a little bit, though. Like, let it keep living. Keep letting it live on. Because it only lives on if you keep playing with it, right? Um, As far as, like, kankies, just figure out what side you want to wear. Or if you can't, just put it right in the middle. I don't know. Be a tramp. I do know people that, like... Either wear two on, like one on each side, or like just put it straight in the middle of like the belt little, loop, like a little like tail. A tail. <laughs> <laughs> I can't decide today. I'll do just both. <laughs> um, now, what do you do real quick if you're a switch? Do you if you're like switch on two, like if you it, like if you have gray, like say gray for bondage, right? Right. Do you wear one on each pocket, or do you you know primarily top with bondage out in public though? Yeah, in public, I normally only flag the things that I top, top with. Okay. Um, occasionally I'll flag the bottoms, but. Yeah, and I nor I don't flag like all of, of them the because I literally like so many have it to all the way to the bottom. Yeah. I I flag like max two in a pocket. Yeah, I usually so I can I have like pick, one in the I'll other pick pocket one for the like, evening. I'll usually pick one for the evening. Yeah. yeah, well, I normally do a black and a gray. Yeah, that's fair. Are the two that yeah. I do, and so I do them together. Yeah, but yeah, those are those are the ones. Or oh, you have like a whole bouquet out your ass. <laughs> um, I also started making um leather roses. Oh, cute! And like leather daisies that oh, are cute. in. The flagging colors. Okay. So would you, was that like on a, as a brooch or a pin or? Mm-hmm. Okay. All right. So I like that. Yeah. I usually will uh, wear a bandana like on my head and tie it, but I'll tilt the bow to whatever side. So I'll oh, tilt the bow cute. to the left. That's and that's my cute. flag to the top. Okay. Tilt it to the right. You know, keep the I've also eyes. seen it around boots. Yeah. Hmm. Like, like the laces and things like, like that. Laces, but women will tie their bandana around like, their boots. Because we don't have pockets. No, I'm just kidding. Because we don't have fucking <laughs> pockets. <laughs> What do you, what do you got? You've got a whole face full. Well, you're like like a, the the ruffle and the tail with the things. So I was like, make a bustle out of hankies that you flag. She would have an entire quilt. <laughs> That's the point. You don't I need could. another project. <laughs> Not right now. <laughs> I'm trying to build a house. Write it down for later. <laughs> later. The you much said later part of the book. I was like, wait a second. Uh, no. Hey, Alpha. <laughs> she doesn't need a project, right? No. no. Hey, Alpha. Oh, hey, well, you can make it for me. Quilt, yeah. I, don't, I don't need the blanket. I just want, like, a just, bustle. But, like, a, yeah. Because yeah. I love yeah. bustles. Yeah. Yes. But, um, no. Sorry. Yes. That was my, like, <gasps> idea. Um. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. I like it. I dig it. I dig it. I like it a lot. What was your favorite little Polari word you discovered? Or, like, when you... I know you wrote down some of your phrases. Did you, was there one that you didn't bring up that you were like, this word just really tickles my jollies. 
Yeah, but I can't remember. Damn it. Oh. I really liked Black Market Queen. I do that one is nice. I was like, I suppose open market. <laughs> BMQ. <laughs> um, I really liked that one. And then I, I really liked talking about people's dirty dishes. Dirty dishes. <laughs> I like I, I like cod. I'm taking cod with me. Taking cod. Yeah. But I'm going to say cod peas. Yeah. I want you to know what I mean. <laughs> A pokey cod, pokey cod, small and awful. Oh. Right? Awful, small, yeah. Awful, small. I like it. Yeah. I dig it. I like it. <laughs> Are there any Perfect. final thoughts on secret communications or ways that we talk about each other? I think it's going, it's, I mean, it's language, it's going to keep evolving. And so I, I can't like keep up with all the new slang. I, I don't have TikToks, so I can't keep up. I can't, I have to wait for videos from you guys. <laughs> So I can keep up. I'm glad. We, I'm glad we can provide them. <laughs> right, because I'm always like, uh, that's the service that we provide. Yeah, the TikTok we'll videos. It down I, was for like, you. I was like, I have no idea what these <laughs> kids are me. <laughs> but no, I just I don't know. I'm always so fascinated about the history of the lifestyle since there's so much of it that I'm still delving, like just scraping the surface on all mm-hmm. of it. So I really like when we get to do stuff like this because it's some of it. It's like, oh, I know more than I thought I knew. I just didn't know that that's what it was. And or I knew this like, fact, but I didn't know why wise. this fact exists. Yeah. Or I didn't know more the background of something. You can memorize right. dates and you can memorize, memorize oh, people, want. but like sometimes the little tidbits, the why, kind of nice. and yeah. like the small nice. details are what make it for me and makes like, it real. I my think. passion about like learning these new things. And yeah. So like, that's my thing. I so look into it there's some really cool articles out there i found a few really cool polari articles when i was trying to look at this because anytime you if you just type in secret gay language it's there's polari. like five polari articles right off the bat that come up for it um i really liked this because it was the first one that i delved into a non-american history yeah um, like yeah a not mm-hmm. american queer history yeah yeah that was really interesting and seeing the parallels of like how we fed them and they fed us. Yeah. Yeah. Like, mm, There's more exchange the than we thought there was. <laughs> I did notice a couple of things that I was like, oh, my my uncle used to say those things too. And you're like, ooh. Because mm. there's always been like a little like, mm-hmm. he was very effeminate. He was. He had good the, friends. Did he have good friends? Uh, he, was, he was only married once for three months. Okay. Uh, he was in the military. He had been to Europe during the oh, war. Definitely. He's okay. very effeminate. He so loved. He was, was he black market? Oh. Was he black? <laughs> We're thinking he might have been black market queen. Well, he was 80 in like 1998. So, okay. yes, he yeah. would have definitely yeah. been. Oh, like, yeah. Yeah. Uh, he loved his very tiny silver belts. He'd get like the little metallic, like as thick as my. Pinky. Oh, like the little chain one. Little, oh. like, it was leather, but it was a child's leather. Okay. <laughs> like, and I'm like, sweetheart, what? Like, is that really I loved it. Oh, yeah. And as an yeah. adult, I'm like, oh. so much of his life makes more sense now. Yeah, like, wow, I just, I always just thought you were magical as a child, right. but that makes sense. I mean, yeah, he's still magical he's still to magical. me. He's still magical. I love him. He's great. Mm. Uh, a little bit. Uh, I want to give some of the resources yep. that I used. Yep. Um, again, Jessica Kelgren Fozard. It's the secret LGBTQ plus language. Uh, that was the video that sparked my interest in okay. all of this. Uh, she's really awesome. She has a ton of great videos on all different topics. Um, Polari, the short documentary on BBC4. Uh, it's a, I think it's like 20 minutes. Okay. It's about okay. the Around the Horn oh, right, right. show. Oh, right, right. Okay. Okay. Um, putting on the Dish from 2015 and the works of Paul Baker. Uh, I'll include a link. He has a number of books and articles about it that were all really good. Brilliant. Oh, wow. my last fun fact. Tell oh, me. Yes. Uh, there's a episode of Doctor Who. Oh, <gasps> I believe it. I believe it. Very Call, called Carnival of Monsters Ooh. that uses Polari. I love it. Poli- yeah. Fucking so love that, it. that's my like ending. That's your like, that's my fun fact. So I was like, I had a Dr. Q like, wait, I had David Bowie. I have Morrissey. And now I've got the fucking doctor. doctor. <laughs> the doctor you know is in. Yes, Carnival you know of Monsters. The doctor will see you now. I believe that. I'm <laughs> planning on going and watching that tonight. <laughs> Fantastic, fantastic. For me, some of the resources that I use, um, if you want to look into any of this on your own, was Wikipedia's LGBT slang page um, that had a lot of them. It had a lot of uh, the more out there ones. And it also dives into history 
um, and some other languages that I didn't get to for this because I was kind of focusing more on the U.S. Um, and then uh, The Odyssey has an article on gay and drag slang translated. And so, you know, that's kind of the more mainstream stuff that we talked about coming about. Um, and then some, what is it? Oh, Your Dictionary has some modern gay and LGBTQ slang for it. So that's what provided the hundred footer for me. And uh, <laughs> we'll also say that uh, Dragula... Definitely yes. informed a lot of our decisions. Yes. With a little bit of queer, or a, well, queer eye and uh, drag race. Yes. But mostly Dragula. So, yeah, it sounds like a good time. Um, for me. And remember, trouble, trouble comes, comes in three. three. And get cottaged. <laughs> <laughs>